there ain't nothing fancy about this pattern. Look at it. There's nothing fancy about it. Nothing. Look at it. Right now, all it looks like to you is paper. This is you starting out in Christ. This is us getting reset now. I went to church Sunday, and it was, it was kind of scattered. God said, I need some people to just start the pattern of being back in there. I got more in the bag. God said, I got a whole life laid out for you. There are going to be some great expectations. Something great's going to come out of you. God, I thank you. I'm still alive. God, say it. I thank you. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Let somebody laugh at you, but they're laughing because you're alive. Reset. Inspired by your Christ Church in Dallas, Texas, and it's time for some praise and worship. I need the mics up, I need the house up, I need everybody in the building, those of you that are on the internet. Thank you for being with us. This is the Inspired Body of Christ Church, and we are in a social distance service, but we are in fellowship. Everybody say, Yes, I trust God. Say, Yes. I trust God. I want to thank God for the living sound choir behind me here. We're just going to open up with a few songs and y'all know how we do it here, right? You know how we do it. Okay. Let 
Welcome to church this morning. We are here this morning because it's time to reset. Hey, <laughs> let's make up a song right quick. I'm glad. You gotta repeat me. I'm glad to be in church today. Wait, that didn't go right. Let's make up another one. Give me a beat. Give me a beat. Give me a. Okay, let's make this up. I'm glad to be in church today. Sing. I'm glad to be in church today. I'm glad to be in church today. I'm glad to be in church today. Do they say, I'm going to praise God anyway.
You know, it's been a year since we've been in church, y'all. And coming back for some people, you're a little nervous. Um, you don't know how to respond around people. Even all this jumping around and moving and singing. And, you know, the, the author of the song talks a lot about some biblical stories where people had a chance to, to wait on to wait on Jesus. And I don't know what your prayer is right now, but just keep, just keep waiting on it. Just keep waiting on it. Just keep waiting. So we're real big around here on worship, and we're going to talk about worship today. And so I want to go into this song as we go into the message today. And I want you right now, whatever else was on your heart, whatever was on your mind, come on, guys, just, just, just release it. Just, just take it to God and say, God, here, you handle it. I can't deal with it. I can't handle it. I don't care what sickness it is, whatever disease it is. God, here, you handle it. I can't handle it. Sometimes when you celebrate people, you have to be careful because somebody's feelings are always hurt. And God, teach us how to do what we do in love. Teach us to know that, God, one day it's going to be all of our days and all of us have to come together. Okay? Now, this words are real simple. It just says, I don't mind waiting. That's the whole song. I don't mind waiting. And I want you to just right now, whatever your tensions are, your doubts, just, just give them to God. We're just going to get in a whole different mindset right now. And, and, and after this, we may give a little word or we might just go home. Okay? Anybody here waiting on God to do something? Right. Okay. Really? Now, at any moment, any moment you feel like, God, I need you to talk to me, then you can just stand on your feet. If you just stand on your feet for five seconds, one second, I don't, I don't want you to put on for anybody else. And I'm not asking you to stand up. I'm not. I'm not. Because this is not, you're not honoring me when you stand. If we're going to reset, y'all, that's what this is. If we're going to reset, we got to start doing things. God, what, what would it take for me to, to let you know, you know, my back's hurting, my feet are hurting. But I don't mind waiting on you. We're just going to. Together, just you join in with us. fix it and it's not being fixed that means he's giving me the patience to wait on it you got tears rolling down your face don't dry them up so fast enjoy that I don't mind waiting whatever you're gonna do God go ahead and do it in me we're not singing to y'all by the way you sing to him I don't mind waiting. We're not on program. We're not on program. We are not on program. We're not singing to you. Everybody's waiting on God to do something. And it ain't nobody's business but you and God's. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm waiting on my son to come. I'm waiting on my daughter to come. I'm waiting on my family to change. I'm waiting on my house to go through. I'm waiting on surgery. I'm waiting on my body to feel better. But it seems like, God, you're just telling me to wait. And while I'm waiting, is I know you're strengthening me because I've been waiting longer than anybody I ever knew how to wait. I don't. Yeah, just stay right in there. Just stay right there and talk to him. If you miss that sermon coming, you'll get this sermon right here. Yes, 
Yes, I need you. Yes, I need you. Jesus. We're gonna just we're gonna just stay in this mode for just a minute, y'all. Just we gotta just slow some things down. Just slow it down for a minute and, and just let God do what He's gonna do. I need a word today, God. I need a word. Lord, I need you.
That bothers some people. You know that? That bothers some people. And I don't know if you've ever been desperate and you needed God to do something. God, I need you to do it now. I need you to do it last week, last month. God, what's taking you so long? Somebody say, it don't take all of that. Somebody say, it don't take all of that. But I'm getting loud because I know he's getting closer because it used to hurt a lot worse than this. I know he's getting closer. I know he's getting closer. I know he's getting closer. The closer he comes, the closer, the louder I get. The closer he comes, the louder I get. The closer he comes, the louder I get. Thank you, Clara. We just had to do a little bit of that. Y'all can. I don't mind. The Bible says they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So I don't mind waiting if I know I'm getting stronger. Sometimes I just can't feel like I'm getting stronger. We're not going to apologize. Choir members, stay inside the building, please. We're going to get up here. And we're just going to get a little word and we're going to leave out. Yeah, come on inside. Jesus. You can sing that. If you don't know how to sing, just make that noise. Jesus. I don't mind waiting. It used to bother me to wait. Because it looked like God wasn't doing nothing. And I woke up one day and I said, I'm still here. I'm still here. I, you, some things you thought would have killed you by now. But the Lord said that weapon was formed, but it's not going to prosper. It just, it just feels like it. You don't have to ask anybody to apologize to anybody for anything. You just, you, just, you, you just go ahead and have your moment. I christened the baby right here last Sunday morning, two months old, right here, right in that very spot right there. I christened that baby, blessed that baby, two months old. That baby died Wednesday. Lord, I need you. Yes, I need you. I would not leave this building if I were you. I would stay in here today and fight for the rest of my life to hear whatever God's going to say next. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name this morning, I give you all the glory and all the honor. Because I realize today, God, that on my own, 
I couldn't even stand on my feet. But I thank you for your strength. Thank you for placing something inside of me, God. Your Holy Spirit that gives me the strength, courage. Somebody's listening to this message today, God. Right now, they're in this building. And you're going to speak to them today, that specific man or woman, like you've never spoken to them before. And I know you are. Thank you for giving us the ability to want to reset. Some people don't want to reset. They don't want you to revive them, remind them, reassure them. But God, we don't mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. You have a praise and you have a praise muscle. Sometimes we clap our hands, y'all, and that's just the way we praise. We watch football, basketball, baseball, run track. We praise. We don't, we don't care about what anybody else that we just, that's just the way we do in our sporting events. And, 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 and when we come in church, we have praise muscles. Ushers, y'all can go ahead and have a seat. I know you've been praising. We, 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 our men meet here on Fridays, and we just, we just worship the Lord. And I want to invite every man. I don't care if you're a member of the church or not. If you just want to get closer to God. And uh, just come up here on Friday nights. Just, you, know, you can wear what you want to wear. And we don't care about nothing. You just come on in. You, you don't care about nothing. So I'm telling them to sit down. Because if folk want to go on, just go on. Let them go home. But ask them on the way out if they're all right. Sometimes people can have emergencies. And we want to keep up with, with you. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get started. I guess you can figure it out. Um, we've been talking about how everybody in here, everybody's still not in here. S some, some, some of you are waiting until the coast is clear. But I guarantee you, if you holler out, he'll clear more coast. Of all the places we can really condemn, it's amazing the way the church is being condemned for just continuing. And God is renewing our strength. And I just want to say, we don't have any apologies for being back in church. And I just want to pray for you if you want to hurry up and get out of here. Drive by here any day of the week and see what a casket looks like. We got little caskets. We got medium caskets. We got old caskets. People are dying. But I declare right now, I want you to repeat after me, I shall live. No, put, put it on out there. Put it on out there. I shall live. I, I, and I don't know who God is talking to, but he talked to me first about that. I don't care what your doctor's reports say. You got to say, I shall live. And then I want you to go back to the doctor and let him find out. Let him find out. See, that's your faith. When you go back to the doctor, say, doctor, hook it up again. Take another picture of it. This diagram shows us a pattern. And we're going to be working with this for a minute. And these patterns represent something that we don't see yet. And, that, and I just want to, for the, for the brief moment, say that represents all of our parts here. You'd be amazed at how God's going to use you. you. You say, well, I'm 49 and he's not used me yet. You haven't been through your storm yet. You've just been in the rain. See, when, when, when you, hey, Jesus, when you come out of it, then it's your chance to be used. It's amazing, though, how some of us have gone in and come out, and we still won't let him use us. Here is a thing that we tried to show you before we get to the scripture this morning. A lot of people talk about, uh, you know, who you are in God and, and how much you are in God, and, and you give yourself a whole lot of credit. And, and, and God showed us in 1 Corinthians, and, and if you come back to Monday school, he'll show you a little bit more about it. I, I hear all of it. Being a Christian, that was almost like, okay, let's see how many likes we get. Let's see how many people like what we do and how much celebrityism we can get and how much, you know, all the, and it's really all kind of geared in a different way. 1 Corinthians was telling us that God gave all these gifts to us. He, he, they're his gifts. And he put his gifts in us so that we could show his gifts. 
Yeah, kind of boring, huh? Yeah, yeah, see, he puts it in you, and when you do it, it shows him. And so he gets glory for it. And a lot of times we get insulted, we get mad, we get frustrated because people don't recognize our gifts. Newsflash, they're not yours. <laughs> now that probably was the one thing you just did not want to hear coming to church today. As much as you've told people that, you know, God's gifts is da 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 da, da and, and God, uh, I got these gifts, and I can do the gift. I've said it before. I, I can do the gift of healing. I got the gift of healing. I got the gift of this. I got the gift of that. And, and, and what you don't realize is that it's not yours. It's his. So it's just like this reflector. I just wanted to bring one to kind of show you this morning again. This is a reflector, all right? And this by itself, if you don't realize it, you think that this is, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that this is shining, okay? So that's who you are. See, you're the reflector. You are not the light. Man, did that just bust somebody's bubble? I'm just a reflector. I am not the light. Well, pastor disappointed me. That's because you had your trust in the reflector. Keep your trust in the light. I am a reflector. In other words, I show what's coming through me. You show what's coming through you. Now let me show you what a light looks like. See, that's the difference. That's kind of powerful. You see that? It's kind of strong. Don't look into it and don't go near the light. Never mind. See, that's the light. A minute ago when I held up the reflector, y'all didn't do anything. When I held this up, now some of you looking through the mask. Hey, don't play with me, man. That's just, that's just, see, now, now watch, watch. This is the power, right? This is the power. This is the power, and this is you. Do you see the difference? Watch what happens when the power gets into you. Now you light up. So who's lighting you up? The power. This is God's gift. This is you. Bam. Stop calling it your gift. That's why you want to put yourself on programs and tell people you got these different titles that you have not earned. He puts his gift where he wants it to be. Y'all get it? <clears throat> Just a minute ago, you saw them present that gift. Now that gift, they, it went transferred from here to her. It's her. Now it's her gift, so she can give it and put it where she wants to. God can put his gift where he wants to. And when his gift shines... He gets glory. Now, people say, you have great voice. To God be the glory. It's, you know, I'm just a mouth. He's the voice. Y'all get it. Does that make sense to anybody? And so we're really big in about telling people what our gifts are. And, and I know there may be some debate, so we'll just wait. You just debate. What you do is debate against 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 9, and then tell the Holy Spirit he lied. He puts his gifts where he wants them. We just reflect it. On your car, that reflector on the back is just a reflector. It's not the light. If somebody goes up and hits that reflector, they're going to break the reflector, but the bulb is still there. That's the difference. We get broken all the time. They made me mad. God's still shining. Oh, you done? Yeah, I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving God. I'm going out here. I'm getting in this other stuff that I heard about. God said, ain't no biggie. I can put my light in somebody else. And, and God is so wonderful. What I love about him, though, is he know where you ran to. And he'll just let you sit out there in that valley in the shadow of death for a long time. And then you get desperate. And he says, can you hear me now? Yes, Lord. That's where your testimony comes from. From when you thought he wasn't there and he picks you up and that's the reflection. Y'all get it? All right. Okay. Let's talk about something really quick today. We had this wonderful discussion Friday night and God said it was more than a discussion. It's a, it's a lesson we need to talk about. So let's go here. Now it's going to happen in a very wonderful way. There is a man who had an emergency, and we know this story, and 
I say we know it. I don't want to, you know, I like to pretend everybody knows everything. But we, we know the story. He had an emergency. And we talked about it several years ago. But there's something that God showed me this Friday that he wants me to show you now so we can start getting some results. We keep talking about resetting. But what if we're saying, Pastor, I don't know how to reset. Is it open? Is it honest enough? Can we be honest enough to say that? Yes. Sometimes I just don't know how to reset. I want to reset. I, I signed up for the 90-day uh, reset promise, but I really don't know how to reset. And, and, and every time I ask someone, they act like I'm supposed to know because I've been a Christian so long. All right. So I'm trying to slow it down because I want to speed it up really fast and get done with it because it's just a real simple situation. But I want somebody here today who's never experienced God to experience him. In the book of St. Mark, the fifth chapter, 22nd verse through the 24th verse, it says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Now, I'm going to read the scripture all the way through. Then I'm going to teach the scripture. And I'm going to show you, according to God's word, how he has told me, taught me how to help us to reset. We, we can't keep saying, oh, man, more and more people are coming to church. That, that, that's really not the issue now. The, the issue is how many, well, I almost gave the thing. Let me go on there. Here I go. And so, behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. Jairus was his name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. And she shall live. And Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thronged him. There's a whole lot more that goes with that verse. Because after that, there's a woman that stops Jesus on the way to get this man's daughter healed. They get to the house. People are all over the place because the little girl is dead. And this guy shows up with Jesus. Bad timing. If he was any kind of God at all, he would have come before she died. But now he shows up after everything has happened and the girl is dead. And that's how some of us are looking right now. We think now it's all done. Now where are you, God? He said, I was waiting on you to get beyond what you could do. Let's read that again. Now sometimes when you start understanding God, the word itself will get you. It will just get you. There was a man, ruler of the Synagogue, that meant they, 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 he, was, he was over the church. His name was Jairus. And this, that means he, he loved God. He loved God. He was just like you. He loved God. He, he was over the church. He was over the synagogue. And his name was Jairus. And he went and saw Jesus. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. First of all, we're going to start going through some things here in a minute. He fell at Jesus' feet and he, he besought him greatly. He spoke out loud. And he, and he, why? Because his daughter is at the point of death. I don't know how many of you love your kids. But there's one thing that will make you cry out to God more than anything in your whole life. is when your children are suffering. And he says, I'm praying you come and lay hands on my daughter that she may live, be healed. And, 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 the, and then he said, and she shall live. The same man that said my daughter is, is, is dying is the same guy that said that she shall live. The same guy that says, come heal my daughter, uh, Jesus, she, she's at the point of death. He's already said death. Now the same man is saying, live. Watch your mouth. But know where you're guiding what you say. The same guy that said that there are some people that are calling death into your life right now. Those same people, God said, I will have those same people speak life into you. Be careful about it. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him. So of all the things we could talk about, this is what I want to talk about today. Brother Dow, this right here. Jesus went with him. Subject this morning, the stuff that makes Jesus follow you. And that's all. And see, after that, we're done. That's the only note I have today. So let's talk about the stuff that makes Jesus follow you. Not really exciting, is it? But we always hear about these people that are following Jesus. But very seldom do we ever hear anything in the Bible where Jesus is following somebody. There is something that you can do to make Jesus follow you. Have you ever been in church and kind of get distracted? Like, I want to read my iPad, read my text messages, look at my notes. There are a lot of things that can distract us while we're trying to hear from God. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that word for somebody. That right now was enough to write down. There are a lot of things that can distract you when you're trying to hear from God. People will call. Tell them I'm busy. Why? I'm, 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 I'm desperate. I'm talking. I'm listening to God now. Call me after church hours. How on earth can you get God who created everything to listen to you? Let's talk to the person that, first of all, is doubting himself or herself. How are you going to get God to listen to you and not to just listen to you, but to respond to you in your desperate situation? How many people are crying to him? How many people are saying, God, I need help? How many people say, my family's falling apart. I don't have food to eat. And da, da, da. How many people say that? But what's going to make him listen to you? Isn't this an interesting subject and topic that the Lord would speak to us about today? There's a way to do that. There's a way to cause God to listen to you while everybody else is talking. And it is my responsibility this morning in the next few minutes to tell you how. That's what happened to this guy some years back in the Bible. His daughter was dying and he knew he had to, he knew he had to have an answer. And so how did he do it? He was, first of all, just like you. He was a big shot, okay? He wasn't a chump, so let me talk to all the big shots first, all right? And all of us are big shots, okay? There's nothing wrong with being a big shot. You're a big shot. You're, 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 you're Mr. Big Stuff, okay? You're, you're Miss, Miss Know-It-All. We got it, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you know it, you just know it. But I want to talk to successful people. I want to talk to the, the, the professionals. This man was a doctor. This man was a lawyer. This man was a ruler of the synagogue. He was the same as, as a professor. He was the same as, 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 a, as a principal, as a bishop. This man was the top dog. He was a big shot. He was an accountant. And, you know, sometimes when we go to church, we wonder, what do people do? And when we come into church, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what we do. It's, matter who, it's a matter of who we serve. So we can walk up in the church and you can kind of size people up. And that's what makes some people say, oh, I'm not going in there. They're hypocritical. I'm not going in there. They have sins and all that. And, of course, that's just the same as you walk into a laundry man trying to smell someone else's laundry. You're all dirty because we're all in the same machine. Now, there are some clothes that are dirtier than others. And as Sinbad would say, there are some that are dirty and there are some that smell. But I'm not Sinbad, so I don't go into that. The ones that smell... <laughs> You don't wear those no more. The dirty ones, you can wear that again because nobody will see it. That's what his little joke is. But we're all in the same laundry basket together. We're all in the same wash together. And this guy, though, just happens to be you. I don't care how important you are. You're important to God, and you're important to a lot of people. But look at where they both are. He's now the ruler of the synagogue, and he's going to see Jesus because he's got an issue. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you have an issue. I'm not going to raise, ask you to raise your hand if you have a problem. That's not my business. And I am by no means, and the Holy Spirit is by no means trying to embarrass anybody in here today because he's a gentleman and he doesn't do that. When I operate in self, I may embarrass people. When I operate in the, uh, the Holy Spirit and he's moving through me, nobody gets embarrassed. We just get put in check. Okay, so we all have this time in our lives where we, we, we know we're it. And you're listening right there online. And it's very easy right now to say, okay, 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 let me switch to something different. Let me beg you to just listen to God for just a minute. So he goes there, and we know the story. He fell at Jesus' feet because his daughter was dying. And I have to keep saying it. In Matthew, the ninth chapter, he said his daughter was dead. So Matthew and Mark saw the same thing, but they just read it different. Matthew says she's dead. Mark says she was dying. Sometimes somebody can look at you and say it's over. God said, no, not yet. See, sometimes you may have an eyewitness, but you need to let God be my witness. You know, he's a, he's a, no, no, no. Your eyewitness saw death, but your my witness said, no, 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 no. It just looks like death. I'm just letting the enemy think it's, it's over so he won't fool with you no more. God said your eyes are closed, but you still have a pulse. Okay, on with the story. Can I go on? Anybody ever had a sick child before? Wow. Really? That's amazing. You dial the police, you dial 911, you got impatient with other people. And this man's daughter was gone. And so he said to Jesus, can you come? <laughs> First of all, dude, I'm Jesus. I go where I want to go. I'm God. I go where I want to go. Can you come and lay hands on her so 
she can be healed. And here's the cool part. Here's the cool part. Jesus went. <laughs> oh, that was my personal holler. Dude, can you come? Bam, he went. Let me put this in yellow because you got to know the holler part. Let me, let me get the shot part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Can you come? You know, you Jesus, all these people around. Can you come to my daughter across town? Jesus went. He didn't pay Jesus. He didn't write a check. But somehow Jesus went, and when Jesus went, the media went. Y'all missed it. The Bible said the press went, the morning news went, the news channel went, TMZ went, everybody went, followed him. But this man did something to make all these people follow Jesus. Good God, don't miss this message. Brothers, we're going to another level this morning. This man did something and it caused all these other spectators who were just spectators at first, but now they become followers. <laughs> how many of you used to just come to church and spectate? I'm serious. Look, you knew it was music playing. And now how many of you are followers? And then some of you are just lookers right now, but after today's message, you will become a follower. No, 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 no. Let me tell you how cool this is going to be. You will not just become a follower. After today, he's going to be following you. Oh, man. Pastor Rush, you must be crazy. No, you must not know him yet. There is something you can do to make him, first of all, come, change his direction, and follow you. So in just two verses, what happened in two verses to make this happen? Can I tell you why the enemy wants to keep you away from church? Because he loves it when we, we operate in ignorance. It's, it's a little bit more than hollering. It's a little bit more than shouting. It's a little bit more than jumping up. It's doing something that can make the Lord follow you. And when God follows you, he's following you. And so as he's following you, he's saying, I got to make some steps clear so that we don't get messed up. Sometimes God says, peace, be still. Devil, move out the way. We're coming through. And why? Because I'm following him. Nobody knows sometimes. Oh, Lord. Where's that thing? Nobody. What I do with my... It just hit me again. Nobody knows how you stand lit. <laughs> See, ain't nobody following you like this, but they're gonna follow you once you're lit. So how can I get lit? Hey, can I get a witness in here? How can I get this thing lit? How did this man Cause Jesus, I know I'm repeating it a hundred times. I know, and I know you, I know you're smart, but somebody here is trying to figure it out. Like, come on, Pastor, forget them. I want him to follow me today. I don't want to just be able to tell people I went to church because so and so invited me. Pastor, I'm desperate. I got I got something that's got to happen in another week or so. My life is on the line. How can I get Jesus to go to the doctor with me? I would love to make this difficult, but it's so simple. It's just that people with power have a problem doing this. Everybody wants to be successful. We want everybody to see us and, and notice us. And, 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 uh, but Jesus said, I, I, I like all of that. I'm the one that blessed you to do that. But you now, you're beyond a blessing. You need a miracle. And so I blessed you, but, but now I'm going to get involved with the next step. You've been through a lot. You brag about how long you've been at the church and how much you used to do and how much fire you had. But your fire is out. And now there's smoke because you forgot how to get it lit. So can I go back to just two verses? All I want to do is teach two verses. I'm just teaching two verses. How did he get it lit? How did he get Jesus to come and Jesus went? How, how, did, he, how did he go in speaking that my daughter is at the point of dying and, 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 and yet she shall live? How did he get to know that? What did he do to cause all of these people to start following them? What did this man do? It's right there in that first verse. When he saw Jesus,
What color, y'all? Give me a color. Give your pastor a color. Purple. Purple. If you're on the internet, the folks back in the building now, so I got to talk to them too, okay? Send your color in. I'll be on C color wheel. I don't know. He did what? He fell at his feet. That right there, I ain't kissing nobody's feet unless my daughter dying. I ain't kissing nobody's feet unless I'm about to get evicted. I ain't kissing nobody's feet unless the doctor tells me I got cancer. I ain't kissing nobody's feet except Jesus. And if this is how I can get my daughter back, if this is how I can get him to come with me, Lord, I'll worship you. That's what worship is. So, okay, so he comes down, right? And there is Jesus. And why is he dealing with the feet? Because the feet are the lowest part of the body. That's the closest thing to the earth. And so this man gets down at Jesus' feet. Not just this man, this ruler. This dude is the CEO. This is, this is, this is, I don't know who you admire the most. This is, this is the, the, the richest and the most famous, this is, this is, the, the greatest, this is, the, 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 you know. I'm talking about not just the person that comes to church and, and they do that, and then when you don't use them for something, they all of a sudden, it's over. I don't, I don't feel it no more. You didn't feel it because you thought you were the gift. And when you got into your attitude, you tried to shut off his movement. God said, oh, no, I don't, I don't trust you with your emotions. <laughs> so this man, is this making sense to everybody? I mean, I'm serious, everybody. I want children to get this today. Two verses. He went and fell at his feet. Jesus walking through, and this powerful man, this CEO, this, this head of the company, this man that was, I'm 66 years old. I'm 74 years old. I ain't got time for that mess. I don't go to church for that. When I go to church, I don't do that. And God says, before I use you again, I want you to understand why trouble is lasting so long. He fell at his feet, and he worshiped him. You know how many folk look at you when you worship? Do you know how many folk? Somebody say, it doesn't matter. Because see, when you're worshiping, you're not looking at them. You don't, you don't know them. Now, now, if you're dressed too short, you can worship. This is that time when they put that sheet on you. If your pants are too tight and they bust, you're still worshiping him. If, if you, you know, if, if things don't fit right, like the little suit I had on there, I didn't know I was going to be in here. I, would have wore, I promise I would have wore a robe today. So this is the most uncomfortable worship that I've done. So what? <laughs> worship ain't never comfortable. Because God wants worship when it's inconvenient for you. But it's just right for him. And unless you start naked in a closet, you know. <laughs> so, so, so is that why we do the praise in church, Pastor? No, that's not worship. That's praise. Praise is what you do in front of people. Praise involves noise and other people are involved. Praise is clapping, moving. Worship is personal. It's by itself. Even if a thousand people are watching, when you worship, it's you and God. When you praise, it's like, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Put it together, y'all. See, we need everybody to praise. You don't need anybody to worship. You about to go to court. And, 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 and your sentence is in the judge's hand. You ask your attorney, can I go to the restroom for a minute? Yeah, sure. You go in there. You don't have to use the restroom. You got to use the space. Because you say, Father, I'm desperate now. No, no, y'all don't get what I'm saying. I, I dare you in the midst of whatever it is to just, just, lay, just lay on your face a little bit, God. I don't know what to do. And, and I don't even know a dignified way to teach this thing. I don't, I don't. 
I don't, because when you get desperate, there, there, there's no, dig, you don't act dignified. I don't know how many of y'all ever ran out of gas. When, when you get desperate, you, you take those heels off. And, uh, boy, if, 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 I, I want to run out there. You know I want to come out there. But you know when you get desperate, you pick up a bottle. You wouldn't dare hit somebody with a bottle. But when you get desperate, it seems like God just put a bottle right there. What's that, God? That's your bottle. So he worshiped. He got on his feet, he got on his face before God. Let me break it down a little bit more common to you because I don't want this to just, I don't want you to just holler this. You're going to have to use this. We need this and we need it now. This is not a classy example. As a matter of fact, if somebody else would say it, I would, I would probably disapprove of it. But there's a difference here between your praise and worship. See, praise is like when you go to a public restroom. Praise is when you go to a public restroom. Everybody knows it's a restroom. The sign says on it what? Restroom. So when you walk in there, they know you're going to the what? Restroom. Worship is when you go in your stall. See, in the <laughs> it's room for a whole lot of people in the restroom. But there's only one seat. In the stall, God is saying, if you want me to go to your house, bring me in your stall. Now, that's not a classy answer. That's, that's, that's ugly, but I want y'all to get it. A lot of people in the restroom, but there ain't nobody allowed in my stall. Now, hold up. That's, that's personal. And this man... Because his daughter, daughter was there, and all these people are watching. How are they going to watch you? You know what title you have. You know, I'm talking to you in here today. I'm not talking about people now. And those of you that are listening, you know how, what your title is. What if somebody saw you as important as you are? What? What they don't see is the closer... You get to his feet, the brighter the light shines on you. See, you were all in yourself up here, but after a while you say, God, I, I need help. God said, you know where help is. <laughs> Look at where the help is. I don't know if the camera can get there. Look at where the help is. You up here saying, I'm, it's going to be all right. I'll make it, but you're not making it. God said, you know where to go get your help. Uh-uh. 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 There it is. Now talk to me. Now tell me you love me. Now, I, now, now guess what? When we get up, I'm following you. Where are we going? God, I need to go to Parkland. I need to go to Methodist. I need... I just have to do what he told me to do. You had it. You get mad because the church didn't notice your gifts. We didn't give you those gifts. And the reason you're not doing it is because you thought it was yours. And you took it everywhere else but to God. And then you wanted to charge people for it. God said, I gave it to you free. But I use it when I want to. Because if it were your gift, every time you went to the hospital, you would just be healing people going up and down there. Boom, 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 boom. You know why? Because you get a bunch of thumbs up. And you like that. Ooh, he got some likes. He got, he got 10 million followers at Parkland. Because if it were your gift, oh, you'd be showing out. But God says, I give it when I will. That's why you can pray for some people and they'll get better. You pray for other people and they don't. That's not your fault this as the spirit wills guys do you know how we would be if we if we if the gifts were in our hands we would never pray for anybody we didn't like i wouldn't i'd pray god put a tree on 20 in their lane right now Just boom oh good one 
But God says, what I want you to do is if something happens in their family, I want you to pray for them to live. Why? Because I'm going to put the power of healing in you to operate right now. And all things being equal, that's pretty much the sermon. Because after this, they started going toward this man's house. Everybody's following. Then this woman, ain't it just like a woman? Jesus on the way to heal somebody, and she stepped out there. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. See, but this wasn't a typical woman. This woman went like this. The Bible says she got down and touched the hem. Y'all don't get it. See, she, she stopped him the same way the ruler did. She was a nasty discard, but she was in the right position because she worshipped. This woman been bleeding for 12 years. Hemorrhaging, something cancerous. She stayed for 12 years away from everybody else. Finally, she, because faith coming by what? See, after you hear this today, you're going to get the results because you're hearing it now. And the reason the enemy wants to shut me down, shut you down, silence the word of God is because when we speak, chains are broken. I don't care if you don't like me. Somebody's going to be freed and somebody is going to start following him. And the Lord today is going to start following you. Watch. So this woman, <laughs> this man is on the way to where his daughter is. And this woman just, just kind of. Boop. Stops him. Why? Because she touched him. And she was as low as she could get. She was in her worshiping mode. She didn't say what was wrong with her. She just touched him. Well, not really. She touched something that was touching him. That's why your kinfolk ought to be glad you come around. They may not know him, but if they can just touch you, they touch something that's touching him. That's why this whole <laughs> pandemic thing has been kind of driving us a little stupid because we understand the power of prayer. We understand laying hands on the sick. And so the enemy is trying to separate us so we can't operate in our covenant rights. But the Lord said today, okay, Ricky, let me tell you what I want you to do. Since the law is they can't touch people, there is no law that says they can't reach me. So since they can't touch each other, teach them this morning <laughs> how to worship me. And I don't care if they're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, ESPN, CNN. I don't care what they are. You know what God calls you? He says you're mine. He calls you his. God loves you even when your enemies hate you. And, you know, it's just like God. He loves your enemies. Don't you wish you and God could just have a talk about that? No, because they are still mine. Now, I'm pretty much done with the sermon unless you just want me to say something else. Anybody want me to say something else? Okay, because... When that woman stopped him, because Jesus took too long, his friends came to him and, and said, this is outside that scripture. But somebody said, say something else. His friends came to him and said, don't bother the master. She's already dead. Let Jesus alone. He took too long. Some of y'all tired of waiting on him. Because he's taking too long. And Jesus just turned to that man over here. He over, this man was here in mess. See, mess will tell you it's over. Jesus is on the way to this man's house, according to the Bible, right? A woman stops him, but he's still on his way to the house. And, and this man, this, this, this woman stops him. And Jesus, the guy's friend said, hey, man, don't bother, don't bother him because she's already gone. Jesus overheard the mess. 
turned to him and said, I'm still following you. Only believe. Don't listen to that outside mess. I'm following you because you worshipped me. I don't stop uh, uh, following you and I don't stop blessing you because of what other folks say. I know where your heart is. You, you, they didn't see you on your face. I did. They came from the place. I saw you on your face. Y'all understand this now. Satan will send people from nowhere around you to give you bad news. And here's a cold-blooded part. Here's a cold-blooded part. I wish I could. I ain't going to write that. It'll take too long. Jesus just kept walking. I want to tell you this morning, I don't care what they say. Just keep walking. This man had fallen on his face. He said, I believe in you. Can somebody repeat after me? Say, Lord, I believe in you. Now, if you do, if you don't, if you don't, 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 don't. don't. Just say, Lord, I believe in you. He said, I believe you'll come. I said, I said, Lord, I believe you'll answer my prayer. And so that man said that, and he bowed himself down at his feet. And Jesus said, well, 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 if you say she will live, I'll come. I need you right now to say, Lord, I shall live. Then God says, all right, then let me follow somebody living. Because you can't follow dead people. He wasn't following the daughter. She was perceived already dead. He was following the father who wanted life. The Lord's going to use you because somebody's going to want to live. And so don't be afraid, whoever you are in here this morning. Just believe. He kept walking. Jesus was walking full of faith, full of power. Full of knowledge. Death didn't scare him. He kept on walking. I just want to drop this off to some parents this morning. Our kids need us to keep on walking. Okay, y'all? No, I don't care if your kids are grown. They need us to keep walking. Because the Lord is following us. I'm not saying he's not following your kids. But he's following us. And so our, our kids don't need us to say, that's it, I'm not going back to church. It's just too much going on. No, 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 no. The enemy will come and speak death on the trail. You are on your way to victory, and he will speak death on the trail. There was no evidence that she was dead. It was just hearsay. And Jesus said, don't listen to that. Where we're headed on your on our way to your house. And he got there. The world will pronounce you dead. But the Lord said, You shall have what? Everlasting life. The weapons formed against you. They are hurt. Check your own chill bumps. I'm tired of sharing mine with y'all. And so they got there, and let me wrap this up. Watch, this is how you wrap up. This is how you wrap up. So they got there. But I'm going to show you how to unwrap. <laughs> See, just the same way. But no, so they got there, and all these people crying. They falling apart because the kid, kid's dead. Everybody's crying. Jesus busts up in there, and uh, he says, uh, what's up? She's dead. Hey, don't, don't worry about it. Jesus called the people that wanted her to live. Y'all come with me upstairs. I'm going to tell you something. There are some people that don't want you to make a comeback. They have already ordered a dress for your funeral, clothes for your funeral. They don't want you to come back. They were crying. And Jesus said, this girl's only asleep. I got to go and wake her up. Now, now, see, that's your problem, Jairus. You know, God got this old nut, Jesus. We, we know death when we see it. But they didn't know worship. And so, end of the story, he goes up and he tells the little girl to get up and he told them to feed her, which proves she was a black kid. Because, you know, we get up, we got to eat. Well, don't, what you do when you get up from a nap? There's not a person in here that doesn't have a tray next to your bed. Okay, that was my opinion. That's not biblical. So how do, how do we fix this message today? 
I think that there's somebody in here right now. Um, you're tired of waiting. You, you're frustrated. You're scared. You're paranoid. You, you've lost your fire. You have. You still have your fire suit on. So when you show up, you look like you're okay. You don't, you don't, you don't even trust church, God. You don't really trust them anymore. And you've heard so much stuff. And you heard it from the right people, see. The right people got close enough to that man to say, don't bother him. The enemy will open the door for the right people to give you bad news. So in this room right now, I know you're important. I know you're professional. I know you're dignified. I know you got a lot of money. I know you're in love. I know you got a lot of class. I'm still social distant preaching. I know you got a lot of pizzazz. I know you like Sister Rush, you're in a fraternity or Brother Smith, you're in a sorority. I know that. I know you got a lot of political ties. I know you're an educator. I know you're a principal. Pastor, how am I going to look as a principal if my kids at my school? You're going to look like you're going to decrease dropouts. That's how. Pastor, Pastor. It's COVID. The flow is nasty. Oh, you want a clean surface to worship. I've worshiped in a bathroom. I'm not telling you to use my faith. I'm just telling you. How you going to look as a beautician down like that? You own a building downtown. You got your own business. What am I going to look like? You play the instruments at the church. You work at the drugstore, the real one. <laughs> Pharmaceuticals are getting a lot of business, I'm just saying. You're important. I mean, you're really important. I'm serious. You sell real estate. You, you have people driving you to different places. You in first class tickets. You went to Dubai with Sister Rush. You, you up there. I'm talking to you. That's who is. It was specific when he said the ruler. You the bishop. You got all these people clapping when you say clap. You got your knees crossed. Let them all pray. Why don't you praise God? You ain't done nothing. Just giving instructions. You praise God. Shut up. I'm out of order, so I take that back. Forgive me, but not really. You're important. I, 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 wanna, I keep saying that word because God just pointed that word into me. Because important people don't think they need to worship. You want a private session with the pastor. And none of the answers from the church are good enough. <laughs> now you need counseling because you don't have fellowship. And it's all because no one maybe ever taught you how to worship. And that's maybe, we've done, we've taught it here. We teach it all the time. But now it's time to reset. We got to teach it again. You, 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 you talk about holding your money back. I, ain't, I don't want to give my money there because I don't know what they do. Excuse Your money? That was a gift from God. Every time you hold back, you see, he said, I want to put my gift in your hand, but you're a thief. You are a sophisticated, educated, degreed thief. Because you know how to steal from it and, 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 and carry the one. That's my gift. I put that in your hand. I put that job in your hand. I gave you those talents. I'm living through you and you. it's time to give and you're going to say, oh, well, I don't really know.
That wasn't your money. That was his money. And he trusted you. That's you. With money. Ain't nothing. That's you. With his money. You can make it stretch. And you never go without your needs being met. Don't get it twisted, saints. And all of it is simply because maybe we went through this whole pandemic, went through this whole year, and we never fell at his feet. And if you're listening, wherever you are right now, see, you can do this. You don't have to be in this building to do this. But eventually you've learned that when you do this, somebody's going to follow you. Some of your friends will follow you away from church. You going back now? Nope. And look at who's coming with you. Okay. So let's just do something right now. And I'm saying let's because you don't have to. I would use a classic example and say, I can't worship because I got bad knees. And I don't have no pillows. I don't have any pillows up here. But I just dare you to just find somebody's coat. Maybe put your knee on it. You know. Now, when you get home, I challenge you. Clean up your own floor and lay on it. I ain't laying on that church floor. I get it. But can we today? Because after this, he's going to follow you. But Pastor Rush, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like that. I haven't, I haven't been in church long. I don't. This woman up here hadn't been in church in 12 years. This man here had a daughter 12 years old. That 12 was working. They had just delivered a demon out of a man. The man came, the demons recognized, the demon fell at his feet. And the demons left. The man was restored. Just because the man was in that worship position. And all you have to do is just test it by the word. This was not any of Pastor Rush's opinion at all. So now, let me show you before we walk through it. And please don't hold us guilty. I will go back, but they hold too long. Y'all, we've been held too long. We've been gone too long. And let them talk like that. Somebody's going through cancer treatment too long. Y'all, it's too long. If you got to bring you some snacks, I mean, we'll break the rule. Bring you some snacks, feed back there. We'll have the used to be diabetes section because people diabetes, they got to eat. Bring you some snacks, get back there and eat your snacks. Now, turkey and dressing and a Whopper with cheese and fries, that's not a snack. <laughs> but, 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 but show somebody we welcome him, okay? All right? All right, so now that we understand the word, I'm going to read these two scriptures. Let's read them together and see how much they, sense they make now. And you can teach this whole sermon to somebody. And then tomorrow, we're going to talk more about these gifts. Now, you can't miss now because now you're getting it. It's like... Is it like that, Pastor Rush? Oh, it's just like that. All right, ready? Let's go. And behold, everybody out loud, mask like, and behold, where to go? And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, Lie at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Does that make sense now? That's just two verses. God gave us two, was it two? Two verses. Three? Three verses. And change your life today. Anybody feel chill bumps? No. Anybody jerking? No. Anybody's eyes rolling back of your head? No. Anybody laying out on the floor? No. But that little girl got up and the woman that touched his garment straightway it went through her. So let's do this together before you leave. 
if you don't mind, I'll walk with you through it. I'm not going to watch you because you've seen me do it. If I did it first service because I had space here. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. So if you're sitting in a chair, for instance, some of you may want to go in the aisle. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to just talk to you, but I don't want to walk you through it. My mama used to talk to me about riding a bike, but when I got on that bike, that was a whole different story. I took driver's ed when I was in school, and they had a thing called simulator, where you were driving in this big camper. That was totally different from taking my test. It was other people on the road when I took my test. Car was heavy. It was a bunch of stuff going on. So I want to walk you through it. Cover your face, baby. There you go. So here we go. I said earlier, if you have to just do, just imagine doing this, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about your pride, I mean, but if you have to, we're just going to go through a little worship mode here. Now, worship is really at, at your feet. That's when, see, this can be prayer. This doesn't have to be worship. I want you to know the difference. And, if, and, and it's right there in the Word. The Bible talks to us. As you start studying worship, worship is at his feet. And, and ain't nobody's feet up here unless they're on the table. Okay, I just want you to understand. Now, I'm not saying today you're going to do that in here, but I want to walk you through it. Because nobody walked me through this stuff. And people expect you to have all this God stuff. All this God stuff. And nobody's walking us through it. And we're going to reset. We got to walk you through it, little bro. You know? Somebody's sitting at home. Roll over if you're by the couch. Roll over on the floor if you need to. Nobody's looking. It's between you and God. You need the help. Let them do the criticism. Okay, so let's do this right now if you want to. If, you, if there's a chair in front of you and you just want to go through the, scoot yourself out your chair, let the chair go up. And if you just want to, this ain't against your religion. All it's going to be against now is your will. I just don't want to do that, God. I was in the hospital one time. They said they had to put a port in me and shoot medicine in me. I thought, that's crazy. But I wanted to get out of that hospital. And they did it. Okay. And I'm just going to walk you through it. Walk you through it. Somebody said, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. There you go. So while you're there, and you don't have to do this. Please don't say nobody made you do this. But I just want to allow you to. You need it. Now, now remember, when you get home, put your hands on the floor somewhere. Put it on the floor. I mean, really, just be at his feet. Be at his feet. Your son is asking you to do it. Your daughter's dying. This man's kid was at home. The question, what's dying at your house? You can be a cute family all you want to be. We go here, we do this, we do that. Y'all don't worship. Because y'all always fussing about what you don't have, complaining. All right. So while you're there, your face at his feet. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Say, God, I'm desperate and I need you to help me. You know what I'm looking for next in my life. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your glory. I'm bowing down before you, Jesus. I need you right now. And God, I'm just being obedient. Amen. And you just get up. Just get up. I don't want you to have to feel like you're playing with it. See, you just, you were obedient. You were obedient. 
Now, for some of you, you've been praying a long time, but you've never worshipped. So you, you still just went midway, and I, and I respect it. But I want you to know when you get home, y'all. Pastor, what can we do for you? You can worship my God. That's what you can do for me. And then he'll be so open with showing you how you can help. And then you don't have to want to know what, yep, they don't know my gifts. And you don't have to go to all these people. I'm going to talk about these people tomorrow. They talk to y'all and tell you what you have to give to. I'm going to tell you about those people. I'm going to show you right in the word. I'm going to walk up to you. Baby, you got the gift of so-and-so. God's not going to tell me what he put that. And now you out here operating because somebody said it. Sure, they're anointed. Sure, they love the Lord. Sure, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. But sometimes something happens and we get so much power. Now we start to. There would be no need to worship him. There would be no need to worship him. There would be no need to worship him if everybody else knew what you were here for. You just find the people. I got to keep seeking him, y'all. All right. Father, thank you for what you said today and for who you're blessed today. We're going to walk out of here today, God, and a whole bunch of, you following a lot of people now. <laughs> you following us. You, you said goodness and mercy is going to follow us now. Now we know how to make goodness and mercy follow us. We, we know to worship. And, and it's nobody else's responsibility, God. Thank you for talking to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, let's just give God a, now that's a praise. That's a praise. That's a praise. That's a praise. All of our teenagers, I want you all to start praising and worshiping God so that your friends will be covered. And, and, and they're dying too much, y'all. I want you to pray that God will use this ministry now to go out and further help teach and strengthen parents of teenage boys and girls. We can do that. I don't care what people say. Lies will always lie. But that gives us no reason to help those who are struggling. Amen. All right. To those of you that joined us online today, thank you so much. We're going to now go in for our tithing offering period. And we don't, I don't even want to hear a word about how long this was today. We honor God. We honored Sister Rush. We took time and honored you. And you started worshiping today. And it was all decent and in order. And it was time. So now everybody's asking, when's the church reopened? When are you reopened? When are you reopened? Thank you, choir, for singing. We, 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 we've always had 200 folk in a choir. I'm going to tell you, this is not the season of dying. Sometimes God just says, I got to do some pruning. I want to, somebody's not going to complain about being in the church. Sing. Our men here, y'all don't see them, and this is nobody's business, but they don't just come up here on Friday. We're not trying to have a program on Friday night. We come out here, and we cover this place for you. And I'm talking about worship on these grounds for you. Pray on these grounds for you. It doesn't matter who's, we don't even know who. It doesn't matter who is. All right. Baskets are going to pass here. And when we pass the offering basket, I need everybody to stay seated. Please don't move at all. I have one more announcement to make. To those of you that are online, thank you for allowing God to trust you with his gifts. If you want to give on, give LaFi, text to give or whatever it is. Somebody may say, well, you didn't ask anybody to join church today. I didn't ask anybody not to. Whether you join this church or not, I want you to know how to worship him. I want, I want you to know how to get him to follow you. I want you to understand what it means to get you healed. We will always be here. We will always be here. All right. And I'm just, I'm, this is a zone. I don't know if you know, this is, a, this is one of those zones I'm in. I want to laugh, I want to do some fun stuff, but I got to do some funerals of babies again this week. And got young people are wondering, why did God kill my baby? And grown folk don't even know how to tell them, God didn't do that. So I'm going to have to ask God in a different way to talk to a different group of people to explain how Satan doesn't mind stealing anybody's kids. 
He doesn't mind stealing your kid because he's a baby. He doesn't mind that. But your kids are waiting on you. Mom, Dad, can y'all worship? And on my own, I worship God. And I hope you have some strong grandparents until you learn that because they still need to be covered. Great grandparents. Godparents. Um, when we bless the offering, the guys are going to walk the baskets here. I'm, I'm trying to wind down, guys, please. And don't please don't tell me I'm long-winded because I'm looking at a lot of short-winded lives now, y'all. And, I, and I'm tired. Just like I am so, I am physically tired just like you. I pour out. So we're not just trying to hold it out, but there's some worshipers in here. Somebody just got a breakthrough of their life. Somebody's whole stuff just changed. And, and it ain't about your time. I promise you, you're going to be able to eat chicken and roast the rest of your life unless you don't have it. Okay, Father, thank you for this offering and thank you for blessing us as we give now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, all of you that are online that gave with us. Thank you so much for being with us today. And um, we'll, please join us tonight at 630. We're going to have a massive discussion about the difference between wisdom and knowledge and the great things about wisdom and knowledge coming from two of our very own uh, who have gone into other great areas. It's called the Dream Church. It's, not, it's all virtual. So you can sit at the patio and watch it. You can sit on the kitchen table and watch it. You can lay in the bed and watch it. You can uh, go to the hospital and watch it. You can drive along the car. But 630, come on, let us see you. Let us see you here. It's just one hour. From 6 to 7. Did I say 6.30? It's from 6 to 7. And then tomorrow night is Monday school, 7 o'clock. God bless you. We thank you very much, audio visual team. Thank you. We're going to sign out now at this time. God bye, bye everybody.